In this video, we explore the difference between outcome-based education and competency-based education. We will also be identifying strategies for designing learner-centered outcomes using Fink's taxonomy and a modified version of his three-column table. Outcomes, goals, objectives, and competencies. Depending on who you are talking to or what literature you are referring to, these labels can refer to the same or different things. Is this just another example of the rhetoric in education not lining up with the reality or the practice? Shouldn't we be concerned about clearly defining these labels and making sure that we align the context of the how in terms of goal outcomes, goals, objectives, and competencies are used? Yeah, I agree. It's extremely important for us to clearly define our terms and point to the correct context of how they're used. Um, and it, this is much more than just a simple misalignment or uh, a rhetoric uh, uh, within the language. Uh, like we've seen in many other aspects of effective learning environments, it's important for us to go to those primary sources, those fundamental ideas, uh, those, those concepts to help build on our thinking. Um, it helps to clarify what we're really, really talking about. These labels do not all point to the same thing, so it's important that we understand their differences, and more importantly, how we can use outcomes versus competencies that will lead to a very different type of a learning environment. They do create different things, and they're measured very, very differently. Before we begin, it is important to point to John Hattie's research, Documented Invisible Learning, and his affirmation that the human being is the most amazing learning entity and that unless we're looking to hinder learning, almost anything we do with a positive intent will contribute to student achievement. The key is to figure out the most effective way to promote that achievement. We believe that the most effective way to do this is to create a significant learning environment in which we give our learners choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning opportunities, which we refer to as a CSLE plus COVA framework. The use of authentic learning opportunities and the related projects that come from this approach require that we design the learning environment by focusing on learner outcomes rather than learner competencies. Unfortunately, outcomes-based education also known as OBE, and competency-based education, also referred to as CBE, are too often misunderstood or combined in ways that are contrary to their fundamental purposes. There is a tendency for educators to like the constructivist or student-centered rhetoric of outcomes-based education, but prefer the ease of measurement and standardization that comes with a competency-based education model. There are times to use outcomes-based education models and times when the competency-based education model is more appropriate. There also is a tendency for competency-based education to morph into something we like to refer to as covering the content-based education due to its ease of use of measurement and our educational systems infatuation with standardization. We have a tendency to deliver the content. Our goal is to help you understand the differences between the two models and enable you to design a learning environment using the outcomes-based model. It is best to view competency-based education and outcomes-based education on a continuum. Competency-based education is convergent in the sense that there is a focus on specific skills or the transfer of information towards a specific standard. That individual skill or information transfer is performed in isolation from the broader context. A larger task or competency is broken down into smaller objectives by the teacher or the curriculum developer, and the student works on those smaller objectives. And before they are allowed to move on, they are tested on those objectives. Testing, rubrics, and other forms of standardized checklisting focused on assessments are used because one is only assessing if the student has remembered or understands the information or is able to apply the skill or information in a standardized context. Competency-based education is teacher-controlled and content-centered. Unfortunately, there is a tendency to view competency-based education as being learner-centered because of the recent use of computer-based training programs that, and processes that enable the student to work at a competency at their own pace until they've mastered it. 
While giving the student the opportunity to master a skill or information regurgitation at their own pace is admirable, it doesn't move this form of instruction into the realm of being learner-centered because the learner in the competency-based education model is simply being measured on the standardized norm and is generally working towards some form of credentialing. Learner-centered education is more likely to happen within outcomes-based education because the learner is actually given control over many aspects of the learning. Outcomes-based education is divergent in the sense that the learner starts with a broad problem or broad goal that they wish to resolve or accomplish. This work on an authentic or real-world problem will lead the learner in divergent paths. The learner creates or starts to create build or develop a solution to a real world problem that they will use beyond the course of instruction. Assessment of outcome-based education is dependent upon how well the outcome was addressed or how well the learner's project addressed the needs of the real world audience. Due to the divergent nature of the diverse projects, the use of standardized tests, rubrics, and checklists are not effective in outcomes-based assessment. If you're using tests, quizzes, information transfer, focus writing, traditional rubrics, or other forms of standardized measurement, then you are doing competency-based education, even though you might be labeling it as outcomes-based education. If rubrics are used in the outcomes-based model, they must be open enough to accommodate the diversity of projects, and they cannot be used to guide the learning process. The main course goal and the module outcomes identified in a course map or in what we prefer to use, the three-column table, should drive the learning process. The learner works in context towards their end goal and will learn individual skills and acquire the required information and knowledge when they are needed on a just-in-time basis. The learner is in control of the learning process and is given choice, ownership, and voice. The teacher's role is to create the significant learning environment where the learner uses authentic learning opportunities as a context for learning. The teacher also comes alongside the learner as a coach, mentor, and facilitator who aids the learner in achieving their end goals. In contrast to competency-based education, which addresses the lower or more easily measured levels of Bloom's taxonomy, outcomes-based education focuses on design, creation, and construction, which incorporates many aspects of evaluation and analysis. The challenge with this form of instruction is that each student will be working on a unique project, so the traditional standardized form of assessment is not possible. It is also more challenging and time-consuming to create significant learning environments where the learner is given choice or ownership and voice through authentic learning opportunities. But if our goal is to prepare our learners for the challenges of the real, real world, then they deserve this additional effort. Let's consider the example of a bird habitat uh, from the perspective of a unit and take a look at how it would be implemented from a competency-based education versus an outcome education-based perspective. This is a simplified example, and there are many ways that CBE and OBE could actually be realized, but I'm simply providing you a contrasting example. With CBE, the learner is asked to consider where birds can live, and it's given explicit step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a, a birdhouse, and is lectured on where the birdhouses could be strategically placed in a variety of settings. The learner is allowed to build and paint the birdhouses to some form of standard, and then is tested or quizzed on the potential use and placement of the birdhouses. In contrast with OBE, the learner is asked to explore their surroundings, identify native bird species, and then research what type of birdhouses would benefit these particular birds. The learner could select a particular bird or species that they would like to help and explore the things that they could do to help this particular species. Since one of the goals is to address where the birds live and nest, they could then identify the best way to help these particular birds. The project may involve building birdhouses or it may involve including nest materials for the birds. Uh, when I use this type of an example in a face-to-face -face workshop setting, participants often want to improve, improve the competency-based education model by moving it more towards the outcomes based on the continuum. Participants quickly recognize that the highly focused or granular perspective of competency-based education ignores the broader context and limits deeper learning. Attempting to add the context after the fact is a quick fix, and it really does not work. We need to design outcomes-based education from the ground up. You can't just add outcomes to a competency-based education model.
In contrast, competencies like building a birdhouse will fit within the outcomes-based education model. Um, but since CBE is so highly controlled and measured, OBE will not fit within the CBE model. The advantages of this learner-centered paradigm is that it pushes learning into deeper dimensions. Instead of just focusing on the one-dimensional competency or the foundational knowledge perspective, which is very easy to measure, the learner-centered outcomes-based model enables a learner to move beyond simple knowledge into application, integration, and various human dimensions as they develop the passion necessary to learn how to learn. The notion of deeper learning is currently very popular, but it only can be achieved if we move beyond competency-based education and into the realm of outcomes-based learning. To design or create this type of significant learning environment, you need to have an alignment of outcomes, activities, and assessments. The situational factors in the slide relate to the context of the program, the course, the learner, the instructor, the subject, the context of the act of learning in this slide is provided from the authentic learning opportunity within the CSLE plus COBA framework. Auditive versus educative. The notion of auditive versus educative assessment is better understood if you equate auditive with summative assessment and educative with formative assessment. Fink refers to auditive summative assessment as backward looking because you are looking back after the fact. Educative assessment is looking forward because it includes student self-assessment as well as using criteria and standards as part of the formative feedback process which the student can use to make adjustments to their learning. Effective formative assessment is dependent upon not only the right learning environment design but also preparing the learner to receive that type of feedback and to consider learning how to learn and become a better learner. Fink's taxonomy, which starts out with foundational knowledge that deals with foundational understanding of information and ideas. With this foundational understanding in place, one then moves on to the application of that knowledge that is realized through the application of skills, critical and analytical thinking, and the management of projects. The next stage of the taxonomy is integration, which connects the application of knowledge to people and the real world or realms of life. As soon as you include others, you need to consider the human dimension approach, which requires the understanding of oneself and others. When you start working with others, you then need to consider ethics or caring as you consider the feelings, interests, and values of others. The final part of Fink's taxonomy is learning how to learn, and this deals specifically with how the learner will continue to learn on their own as a self-directed learner. Fink's circular taxonomy of learning is realized through his three-column table that aligns outcomes or goals with activities and assessments. It must be noted that while we are using Fink's taxonomy as a starting point, we have updated his approach and his three-column table to take into account the dynamics of significant learning environments. Fink developed his approach in the 90s, and since he was focused on adding significant learning experiences to the average classroom, his approach focused on this setting. Since we are looking at learning that extends beyond the classroom walls and that will incorporate the digital world we now live in, we have expanded Fink's significant learning experiences to significant learning environments. We are also building on this solid foundation and the backward design principles that Fink started with to expand the three column table to include the main course goal. We often refer to this as the Big Hairy Audacious Goal, or BHAG. And while Fink does encourage people to consider where they would like their learner to be after the completion of the course, he doesn't include this goal as part of his three-column table. But we believe that this goal needs to be the primary purpose behind the course that drives the outcomes and should be referred to on a continual basis. The example from the Digital Learning and Leading Program should provide an example of how a well-designed course goal and three-column table can drive the learning process. Learners will identify technological innovations and embrace them as opportunities rather than challenges and use those changes as catalysts to enhance their organizational learning environments. The BHAG is realized through an innovation project that DLL students research, plan, and design and the BHAG is what learners work toward. 
These are authentic innovation plans that are unique to each student situation and organization. Aspects of this same project are addressed in other courses throughout the master's program. And it is important to note that there are generally only one outcome per module. If and when there are two outcomes, they should be complementary. For example, identifying ways of disruptive innovation um, and examples of how analyzing those innovations could be used as catalysts for change is just one way to do this. At the application stage, learners explore examples of how others have implemented innovation strategies. This forms the foundation for the literature review. In the integration module, the learners use their knowledge from the literature review and explore other case studies to develop an implementation strategy. Since this project will be used throughout the entire program, the entire DLL program, the implementation strategy and innovation plan itself will be revised and revisited and restructured in other contexts and other courses. For example, in the measurement course, the learners will look at assessing the impact of their innovation plan. In the course on organizational change, the learner will explore what is involved to really bring about change and will explore the psychological dimension of change as well as the systemic aspects of change as they revise their plans. This notion of the human dimension is addressed by a digital story video that the learner creates to pitch or promote their ideas to their audience. It must be noted that the human dimension and the caring sections of the taxonomy can easily be combined when you are using authentic learning opportunities. The final part of the taxonomy is the learning how to learn section and the learners are asked to explore ideas and resources that they can use to further their ideas and understanding. By asking learners to create an annotated list of resources, you are also getting them to become self-directed learners. In the final module, the learner is also asked to compile their innovation proposal, the literature review, the innovation strategy, and their digital story video into a cohesive post onto their ePortfolio. The reflective activity enables the learner to use the formative feedback they have received throughout the course to build the starting point to their innovation plan. The fact that this plan is to be implemented in their work setting means that they have an audience and standards for the plan by which they can assess their effectiveness. Since we have students from various disciplines like K-12, higher education, not-for-profit, and corporate training in the program, each project is unique, so we have to draw upon the needs of the learner's audience and how well those needs are met by the innovation plan as a primary factor in assessing the learner's projects. While we do use marking rubrics in the program, the rubrics are very vague and general and serve the role of marking guides rather than traditional standardized rubrics, which are all too often mistakenly used to drive the learning activities. Outcomes that lead to the fulfillment of a broader course goal allow for the diver divergence that is part of authentic work. The outcome-based emphasis on Feek's taxonomy and the modified three-column table is the ideal backward design format to use with the constructivist-based frameworks like CSLE plus COVA. If you have created a significant learning environment in which you have given your learners choice, ownership, and voice through authentic learning opportunities, then you need to use an outcome-based course design to help guide your learners through this learning process.